Welcome to another inspirational message from Chowdean Community Church, Gateshead. For more information about Chowdean, visit www.chowdean.org.uk. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Interesting title, isn't it? The Road to Hope. I remember as a kid being at home uh, with my mom and my three sisters, often on the television, all we had was black and white films. Everybody say, oh, oh, right. But a lot of the time, some of the films that came on were Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and a lady called Dorothy Lemoore. And they would do all sorts of different film titles all about the road. But the title that we've got this morning is a different road altogether to what I used to watch when I was a kid. And I think today we live in a world where lots of different questions are being asked by lots of different people. One of the questions is, is there any hope? For some people, the future for them, it's uncertain. In lots of situations, families are falling apart. Drugs are ruining our cities, towns, and schools. Disease is killing our people. The question is, is there any hope? Can we possibly find peace and joy in your life and in my life and other people's lives out there who are going to all these different things? And I suppose one of the things I constantly hear is this. Can we find fulfillment in life? Some people are still looking for answers to that. There's another question that I often hear from people. Can we possess the power and the strength to live meaningful lives? Can we find hope? Do you agree with me? Life is a journey. Yes? Life is a journey. It's as simple as that. We start each day. We've got a plan. We've got a purpose. And some of us maybe even have a dream. And then it happens. Our life hits a bend in the road. And we never see it coming. When someone you know comes to a bend in the road and their world is turned upside down, they're at a point of need. The question I need to ask you is, have you reached that bend in the road where you are looking to find a need for your life and for other people's lives that maybe are a friend or a family member or someone you work with? It's a difficult question that people struggle to answer. That's a place where their relationship with God and others makes all the difference in the world. I need to tell you that this morning, church. Having a relationship with God makes all the difference in the world. And when you get to a point of need, and you know someone who's looking for this need, this something that's just missing in their lives, I want to tell you, You and I, as Christians, as men and women of God, we can make a difference. You can hold back, you can pull back, and you can avoid someone because sometimes you're not sure what to say or even how to help them. But on the other hand, you can reach out to them and have a major impact on their lives. Here's a question for you and I to answer. Ask myself the same question. How much of an impact do you have out there with the people you come into contact with? The young, the middle-aged, the old, family, friends, work colleagues? I want to tell you, church, yes, there is hope out there. There is hope that people are looking for in life. The Bible says this in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Oh, I wonder how many of us this morning are overflowing with hope. Or maybe people look at you and me and think, well, dear me, if that's their interpretation of hope, I am not interested. And I'm sad to say some of the time, that's exactly what happens. There is hope in God. For our God is called the God of hope. And when you're at the end of your proverbial rope, which a lot of people are, and I want you to tell them that there is hope for them. Don't attempt to tie this knot. Simply let go and trust Jesus to fill you with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where we need to be this morning. In God's holy word, the Bible and the book of Romans, we will find the road to hope. Oh, I want you to, when you go out there through the week, to try and give someone some hopeful information. Try to point them in a direction where they possibly aren't going. But this morning, I'd like you to travel down the road to hope with me. Now, in order to make this journey, you'll have to get into your car called life. I want us all this morning to get into that car and we begin our journey. There'll be several sites that we will drive through on this journey that we go through. We'll go through cities and towns and as we pass through many mountains to go over, there are four stops we must make on the road to hope. So I want you to imagine with me that we're on our journey now. As you drive, you'll see towns like rejection, unfulfillment. You'll go through streams where you'll see unconcern. You'll see complacency and apathy. Question is, have you been down some of those roads some of those waterways. Well, the law lead us up to the first stop on the road to hope. It's a place called power. Romans 1, 16, 17 says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Get a gist of that this morning. It's the power of it's the power that we need and I need to get through life's circumstances that come to you and I on our journey. The power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from the first to last just as it is written. The righteous will live by faith. How are you living this morning? Are you living by faith? Or are you just struggling to get through life? Whatever it means for you this morning, I want to encourage you to start living by faith and start trusting in God because there's a power there that's capable of giving you and I hope this morning. The Bible tells us that God has that power and he's unleashed it to you and me this morning. We'll have it. It's available. It's there 24-7. It's in the gospel. It's the power of God that will save you and give you the hope that we're talking about this morning. So where are you on this road to hope? It's a power that will make you okay with God. I want to be okay with God. I want God to be fine with me. Sometimes that doesn't happen. John 1.12 says this, Yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We are children of God this morning. If we put our faith and trust in him, we can have that hope guaranteed. You can have hope but first of all, you've got to come. You've got to stop off at this place called power, where, we, where you'll receive the power. And as we continue to travel down the road to hope, we find that we go through other towns, such as selfishness, 
shame, self-pity. And for some of us, we settle down in those places because we get there and we don't know how to get out of it. Some of us on our journey or maybe still in those places of selfishness, shame, and self-pity. Some of us settle down in those places and we struggle to try and get out of it. And sometimes on our journey, we'll take some detours. And when we take those detours, we sometimes come across deceptiveness. We come across dishonesty. We come across despair. And for some of us this morning, you might be able to put your hand up and say, yeah, I've been there. I've been in that town. I've been in that city. I've been in that place of deceptiveness, of dishonesty and despair. And as we continue our cruise, as we're driving through various places in our journey, in our car, there are countryside communities that we might have passed through. Places like corruptness, cynicism, and uncertainty. Listen, we are living in a world where people are living lives where they're uncertain of their future, uncertain of whether they have a job, uncertain of whether there actually is any hope out there. But we as a church, we as men and women of God, we can say, yes, there is a hope. And it's found in Christ. It's found in Christ. So I want to take us to the second road on this stop that we have to make when we're looking for answers to hope. It's a big city, and it's a big city called change. Some of us struggle with change when we go through this city or this town where we are supposed to be able to change. This is what it says. Oh, how we hate to see the bright lights of the big city called change. But the truth is, the release of God's power results in change. When we find God, God will change us to the men and the woman that he wants us to be. I believe people can and want to change, but some of them are still looking for the way on the proper road that they need to be on to hope. And the biblical word for change is repentance. And the biblical word for change is repentance. I'll repeat that. Because some of us need to hear that. Paul writes in Romans 2, 4, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? What a kind and loving God we have this morning. But you know, we have to allow God to change us, to put us on a different pathway, to change the direction that we previously were going down, that wrong road that would lead us to more trouble and more upsets and more pain and more suffering. You see, I believe that we can and we want to change, but little change is unlikely without the power of God flowing through your life and flowing through mine because that power affects the change in you and me. You might ask, why is change necessary? We all have a universal problem in life. The Bible calls it sin. Romans 3.23 says this, we have missed the mark. We failed to meet God's standard for how he wants us to live. That makes change necessary for you and me this morning. For every one of us out there, who need to find the answers to life. Jesus himself said in Luke 1, verse 3, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants you to find him, and when you find him, you'll find the things that were missing in your life, or the problems that you had will just disappear. And they won't disappear overnight. For some, God can do that. For some, it takes time. We need to be patient. Some of us some of us are on the road to destruction. As Jesus said, and Terry's already referred to this, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. This road of destruction will take us across many mountains. Many mountains. 
I'll give you some examples. Mount hopelessness. Mount purposelessness. Mount loneliness. And you know where all that leads? It leads us through the valley of depression. It leads us through the valley of depression. How many of us, I wonder, have gone through those places on our journey where we felt exactly like that? We felt hopeless. We felt as though there was no purpose in life for living. We felt lonely. We felt depressed. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, there's some of us crying out for rest this morning. There's a world out there looking for answers to their hopeful, hopeless situations. God can give us hope. Some of us would have experienced some of those places I've mentioned. As you come in and out of those valleys and mountains that you've passed through, we're continuing on our journey on this road to hope. And we'll pass through towns like abusiveness. We'll pass through towns like worthlessness, insignificance. We'll pass through those towns. And for some of us, it becomes reality because we feel insignificant. We feel worthless. We feel as though we're being abused. And Jesus says, I can give you that peace. I can give you that joy that is missing in your life now, in your life right now, because of the circumstances you're going through. And beyond some of those towns that we pass through, we come across small places that are called spots in the road. And some of us, when we're driving, we'll hit those spots in the road, and they'll give us a knee-jerk reaction to whatever's going on when we're on our journey. And sometimes we can blink our eyes and we'll miss it. Jesus said, stay focused. Look to me and I will give you life. We'll go through places like fear, anger, bitterness, and guilt. Then we'll go through the city of sin itself until we reach that resting place that could only be found in God. I remember being on holiday with Terry and Margaret in June. We were in Italy, and we were driving through some lovely places in Sorrento, but we came across this place, and I'm thinking, surely this isn't a town. And it was a town, and the name of the town was called Angry. And when, you, when and if you ever drive through that town, as we did on this particular day, all we could see was a town that was riddled with bags of rubbish scattered everywhere. And then I said to June, no wonder this town is called Angry because it was a complete mess. We went off on a journey through Italy again and we came back down through the mountains and June said, surely this won't lead us back to Angry. So we drove through the mountain and sure enough, it led us back into this town called Angry. And sometimes we get to a state like that, don't we, where we get angry. We can get angry with God. We can get frustrated with God. And it felt a bit like that when we were in this town of angry because it was a place where I certainly didn't want to be and I didn't want to stay there. I didn't even want to stop there, but we came through it. And I want to tell you, church, you can come through places like angry. Places like bitterness and places like anger and places like fear because God will give you the strength to get through it. The third stop on the road to hope is this. It's the city of God's love. Why wouldn't you want to stop off there? The city of God loves. The Bible tells us, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Although God wasn't pleased with us, with the sin that we did and the things that we see and do, he was willing to die for us. You see, he loves you and me unconditionally. Regardless of what we said, regardless of what we've done, he just wants us, he wants us to find this road to hope. And I want to invite you this morning 
to come to this road of hope. This can be the start for you of a new journey where your life will be completely turned round because you've taken up the cross. We've been singing of the cross this morning. You see, we're all infected with this penalty of death. But if you don't have Christ in your life, you've got nothing to look forward to. You see, if you know Christ, then death has got no worries, got no fears, no problems with it. Why? Because you have that certain hope that heaven is prepared for you. But you need to know Christ in your life. You see, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. God wants to get us to hope. And he's willing to forgive you and forgive me for everything I've done, everything you're ever going to do. And all we have to do is accept Jesus is our substitute. Because he was our substitute. He died on the cross for you and for me. So by faith in his death on the cross, the penalty of our sin has been paid in full. We sing the song, don't we? Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Oh, I'm glad I can sing that this morning. All to him I owe. Everything I have, I owe to him. Sometimes we forget about that church, but I want to remind you about that. Because through his resurrection, we have this eternal life. There's an example in Romans 8, 30 and 25 that shows us how one man made it to hope and how every one of us can. Every one of us here this morning can get on this journey, on this road to hope. And once we go through this city of God's love, I'll tell you what we'll find. We can find this road that leads to hope. And we'll go through towns and we'll, I'll tell you what God will give us. God will give us freedom. God will give us joy. God will give us security. God will give us a caring spirit for people out there who don't even know who God is right now. Can you sense that this morning? Can you sense that, that you're in God's presence this morning? And the fourth and final stop on our road to hope is this. Commitment. You see, you've got to be committed to the cause. Otherwise, what's the point? I became a Christian when I was 17. I have to say, for years, I wasn't fully committed to the cause. Why? Because of life's circumstances where you're on this journey that we're all on. You lose your job. You lose hope that you can actually find your job. That, for me, was a big hurdle to overcome. But God got me through it. I want to tell you this morning, God can get you through anything. But he needs commitment. Commitment. It says this in Scripture, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Oh, I want that for everyone. I want that for the world out there who's looking, who's on a journey right now that is just leading to destruction. It's going nowhere. You ever been on there? Places like that? Places where you feel as though this is just taking me nowhere. I'm looking, but I haven't found it yet. I want to encourage you to find it this morning because you can find it in Christ. And commitment just means that you repent. You turn away from your sin and you get your life back on track. You trust in God to get you through life because I find that he works for me and he worked for many others and yet they'll be able to get up on the stage and say exactly the same as me because they know that they've trusted in Christ. Confess with your mouth. Acknowledge Jesus as the supreme authority over your life. That's a tough one, that. Because it's saying that he wants full control of your life. He doesn't just want you here on a Sunday morning or at a Bible study through the week. He wants you 24-7 to be with him. He wants to be in your presence. God wants to be in your presence this morning. And I'll tell you what happens when you reach this point of commitment. You reach a point where you'll have forgiveness. You'll have blessing. You'll have purpose. You'll have security. 
You'll have a life that's worth living. You'll have love. You'll have contentment. You'll gain wisdom. And your faith will grow in Christ. Oh, I want all of those things. But sometimes it's me that gets in the way. Sometimes it's things that just get in the way of you growing and being the man of God that he wants you to be. I want to encourage you this morning. Listen, if you need prayer for whatever, if there's things that are stopping you from being the man and woman of God that he wants you to be, come into the prayer corner this morning. Because prayer will get you through circumstances that maybe you're struggling to deal with. Someone wrote this, money can't buy it, but you can't live without it. You see, I can't live without hope. It didn't cost me anything, but it cost Christ everything. Everything. I need to remind you about that this morning. So what can make the future look brighter for you? I'll tell you what can make the future look brighter. By taking Christ into your heart, into your life. All the fears and the worries and the struggles that you had. He'll take them away. He'll take them away. Can I ask the band if they'll come up as we come to the end? You see, with a heart full of hope, you can endure any hardship. You can sustain any love. You can outlast any ups and downs that come your way. Why? Because hope builds character. And it brings people together. It brings you and I together when we need other people around us. We need our church family around us to pray, to be with us when we're not in a good place. I don't know where you are this morning, but I want to encourage you this morning to come to that place of hope because Jesus wants that personal relationship with you. See, Jesus is our blessed hope. It's been written that you can live 40 days without food. You can live eight days without water. You can live four minutes without oxygen. But you can only live a few seconds without hope. We need that this morning, church. I need that to get me through life. There was a guy who wrote a book, and the book was called Stay Fit and Healthy Until You're Dead. And in that book, he poked fun at this fitness craze that everybody's going through. But I need to tell you, it's 100% certain that you're going to die. No matter how fit or healthy you are, but unless you have Christ as your hope, you don't have any true hope. True hope can only be found in Christ. Listen, if you're out there this morning and you want to know more about that hope, please come. Please come. We sing the song, don't we? Come as you are to worship. And I want to encourage you to do that this morning, church. Band. Thank you. This is the end of this message. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find out more about our church, please visit www.chowdean.org.uk and please take a minute to rate our podcast on iTunes.